Red clover and white clover are really important to Kentucky for the benefits that they provide to hay and pasture. We literally seed hundreds of thousands of pounds of red and white clover every year across Kentucky. So it makes these variety trials, particularly the red clover and white clover, uh, very important to us and very beneficial. I'm standing at the edge of the red clover plots and the white clover plots are actually over uh, this shoulder uh, to your left. And if you look at, at these plots, these have been regrowing about a month and they were first harvested uh, in May, early May, and now we're early June. These are, uh, were seeded in the spring of last year. So this is the big production year for red clover if you wanna look at it that way. We're looking for yield and persistence of red clover or white clover. Now in the white clovers, you've got three types. You've got the ladinos, which are tall growing, but don't live quite as long. And you've got the, the commons or the Dutch white clover. They're short, they're low. Uh, they tend to persist longer, but they yield less. And the intermediates that you may find in our trials are gonna be crosses between those that are intermediate in both um, yield, and they're gonna persist better in pasture. So, uh, you know, white clover is important and we've got, we've got the, the yield trials here, but I wanna make you aware that we also have information on grazing tolerance of white clover and many other species at other plots here on the University of Kentucky Research Farm. But taking a look at red clover here for a, a minute, uh, we really want yield and persistence. I mean, we have been looking for three-year red clover for a long time. Uh, Dr. Norman Taylor uh, has, has worked uh, you know, his whole career on improving red clover, and we do have improved red clovers. They just don't show that longer stand life we'd like to see. However, we have been able to, over, over, the, over years, and we've been doing these trials since the early 90s, to include varieties in here that really help you as a producer make a decision about varieties. For example, early on we would only have experimentals and certified or commercial varieties, but yet when you go to purchase seed, you're oftentimes comparing a lesser expensive common medium red to one of the better varieties. And you really need to know that difference. So since about 1993, we have included a common uh, medium red, just over the counter, uh, inexpensive seed in all of our trials uh, to make sure that we know that in fact we are advancing the front, advancing the yield uh, curve for red clover. And that's what you see here. You've got, uh, these are a mix of experimentals and uh, certified commercially available varieties now. And we like to have both of those because if you look at the yield tables, you're gonna see that the experiments or experimentals are on the bottom, the certifieds are on the top. And then we like to have those experimentals in here because those are the, are the, the uh, genetics of red clover that will make up and become the commercial varieties uh, in the future. So then we have a history then uh, before they become a named variety of how they're performing in Kentucky. So we, what we're looking for is yield and persistence. When you look at the, the better varieties versus the inexpensive or the commons, what we see is in the first year they may be comparable. But in this second year, second growth year, what you'll see is maybe a first good cutting and then the stands decline for the common medium reds. And so that's the important thing to understand is that over the three year lifespan of our red clover plots, the certified, their improved varieties are gonna yield a whole lot more and are gonna do so because of both yield potential and persistence. So these variety plots have really helped us make the point for seeding better varieties.